Hello, my name is Chris Harris. I'm a corporal in the Royal Marines Corps of Drums and welcome to the first of a series of lessons aimed at anyone considering a career in the Corps of Drums of Her Majesty's Royal Marines. In these lessons, I will be teaching you how to read music like a Royal Marines bugler. Because of our specialisation and because most of the music we write ourselves, we have naturally developed uh, a unique style of writing music, particularly on military side drum. To be clear, these tutorials are not to replace any kind of formal music training, but specifically aimed at those considering a career within the Royal Marines Corps of Drums. The ability to read music removes all boundaries in terms of your development. Without it, you rely on someone else's reading skills and subsequently their enthusiasm and ability to teach parrot fashion. Hopefully with these tutorials, you'll be able to learn at your own speed in your own time, and you can watch any one lesson as many times as you feel you need to until moving on to the next. The lessons begin with the assumption that you have no knowledge whatsoever and end at a point where you'll be able to read everything in these booklets that have been published by the Royal Marines School of Music and are available from the link below. So without further ado, let's crack on with the first tutorial. Imagine a stave of music, you probably imagine something similar to this. This allows us to write rhythms left to right like you'd read words and pitch up and down like this. Because the military side drum is an unpitched percussion instrument, we only need to worry about rhythm. So for now, our stave looks like this. As I said, music is read left to right like you'd read a book. The rhythms are divided up into measures called bars, the length of which are determined by what is called a time signature. But we'll discover more about that later. Next, we need to learn about different lengths of notes. There are more, but for now, we're going to look at five different lengths of note. The longest of which is called a semi-breve, and it looks like this. It's four beats long. In the time it takes to play a semi-breve, you can play two minims. These are only two beats long. These, in turn, can be divided up into crotchets, a beat long each, and then quavers, which are half a beat long again, and semi-quavers, which are a quarter of a beat long. The Americans have different names for these notes, which I will mention because it makes the relationship between them very clear. The semi-breve is called a whole note in the US. The minims are called half notes because they're a half as long. The crotchets are called quarter notes, quavers eighth notes, semi-quavers sixteenth notes. Hopefully this makes the relationship a little clearer and the names that we use for the notes will just have to be something you simply learn along the way. To start with we're going to concentrate on the quarter notes or as we call them crotchets. Crotchets look like this but when we write drumming, we tend to point the stems downwards like this. This helps us to write more clearly as we write a lot of additional information above the note heads. We also need to introduce you to a crotchet rest. When you see one of these, it simply means stay silent for the same length as it takes to play a crotchet. Now I'm going to demonstrate this with the help of the well-known Christmas song, Good King Wenceslas. In a minute, I'll get you to clap along on the crotchets and stay silent for the rests. Firstly, just watch as I demonstrate. I'll give you a count of four and then we'll start. Ready? A one, two, three, four. Good King Wenceslas last looked out. Rest on the feast of Stee. Rest then. Rest when the snow lay round about. Rest deep and crisp and E, rest, then, rest. Your turn. Remember, clap when you see a crotchet and stay silent when you see a rest. If it helps, breathe in on the rests. It will help you when you get to the bugling lessons. Ready? A one, two, three, four. Well done, you just read music. Next, we're going to look at an exercise involving crotchets and crotchet rests. And we're going to count in bars of four as we're doing it. The bars are divided up by bar lines which look like this. We'll put the numbers underneath for now. You'll notice that straight after a bar line, you start counting from one again. If it helps to say the numbers aloud, then do. Same as before, clap on the crotchets, silent on the rests. Ready? One, two, three, four. One. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Finally, we'll do a different exercise, but without the numbers underneath. And this time, try and count in your head, not out loud. Ready? One, two, three, four. If you didn't quite make it through then you can skip back and try again. If you managed it perfectly then well done, follow the link below to lesson two.